How's it going, friends? This week we have a very short Warrior's Den. However, I am going to cover a little bit of last week as well. As I didn't cover that, I wasn't satisfied with the content that I was able to produce from the live stream last week. So I'm going to be diving into that this week instead. Hopefully you guys are okay with that. I do think the quality is more important than the when, as uh, well everybody gets to play it at the same time. So here we are. For this week's news, we do have a little bit of information. Uh, they did give us the new roadmap. This is for the year three, season two. This doesn't have a ton of information on it yet because obviously the weekly content every once in a while, it's every two weeks now. And then the weekend challenges are also on the roadmap. However, we will be having a XP fest on the 10th. So you can go ahead and jump into that next weekend. That will be the first weekend that three players will be able to play the new Picatori, or Sakura. So that's really cool, as everyone will be able to get double XP for that right as soon as she launches for everybody to buy. Nobody should be left out with a Rep Zero Picatori, like I've been with uh, Black Prior, but uh, we're not going to mention that. The week following that, we will have a Slayer Challenger. This will give us steel and crates. And then on the 30th, we will have a custom game mode called Hyper Duel. Take that as you will. I would assume it's just going to be rapidly respawning duels for five minutes. Honestly, that doesn't sound too bad, but we'll have to see when it comes up. That'll be coming in in a month here. Speaking of event game modes, there is a customization tweak. They are adding realistic game mode rewards. They're adding a black color swatch as a reward for playing those realistic game modes. The, re the reward will be guaranteed by playing any realistic game mode when those are available, and the reward is prioritized based on the hero that you've last played. So it, that means it should prioritize the hero you played that match for the reward from that match. That said, the realistic playlist isn't available this week, but uh, how much you want to bet it's going to be coming up real close here. Starting today with the Hikatori launch, we have a special warrior challenge to play the Canopy Map event playlist for this weekend. This will earn you some steel and some crates. And from there, we can go ahead and jump into the content of the week, or the content of the every other week. And it is T-posing. People have been asking for this since the original mocap demo, and actually before that even. So now we have T-posing, where every character has its own unique take on what they should do when they T-pose. I saw this when I got home today, and uh, wow. I immediately booted up For Honor and bought the Raider one. This is a very interesting take on a total meme in the community and really online culture in general. And it's interesting to see just how much effort they put into something so minor. Every character has its own unique take on how they're going to T-pose, a different unique animation for how they both get to it and how they T-pose. So that's pretty neat. I'm very happy to see it, and I think they're all very well placed. If I played more than Raider, I'd probably buy them for more than Raider. Speaking of playing Raider, Raider and Lawbringer both got their reworks today. So those came out about 12 hours as of recording this video. I'm sure most of you have seen that content on people who had early access. I didn't. That's why I didn't make a video about them, because I didn't feel that the footage I could capture from the Warrior's Den last week was quality enough to make a video about it, so I wasn't satisfied with that. So here we are today. I'll probably be making a video detailing some of that this weekend. I'm very excited for the Raider rework. It does look really polished. The Lawbringer rework is a bit more of uh, something different. They did remove his shove on block, but they did give him additional combos, gave him unblockable finishers for all of his heavy chains, stuff like that. In addition to that, both Raider and Lawbringer had their light speeds sped up to 500 milliseconds instead of their slow ass 600 millisecond lights. Lawbringer actually has a 400 millisecond top light now, and then uh, both of their CC moves were reduced so that they can be knocked out of them, so Lawbringer's impale will be able to be hit and he'll drop you, along with Raider. If you're carrying and you get hit, you will drop them. Then as a general fighter change, they've changed how static guard works so that there's no longer a 300 millisecond buffer. It is now a 100 millisecond buffer, the same as reflex guard heroes. So all this means is that you can put pressure better by switching attack directions. Whereas previously all static guard heroes used to have an additional delay that assassins didn't. I will be jumping into those changes more significantly as mentioned along with the Hikatori. That said, as a quick overview for the Hikatori, 
she's a samurai with an axe, a very large, big fantasy axe. It's totally meaty, really heavy. She has hyper armor on her heavies and very fast light attacks, along with a unique mechanic where she can go into a channeled state along with a kick and you can charge the kick into a sweep so you'll knock them down. She also has some very unique feats. She has uninterruptible executions as a level one feat. Her level two feat grants health to all nearby allies when that person is executed, whether from her or not. Her level three feat grants her additional damage resistance after executing an enemy and it lasts until she dies. So it's basically permanent armor after you kill somebody. And her fourth feat is what the developers said is pretty much a guaranteed kill. It deals 200 damage, it is unblockable and unparryable, can be dodged if you see it starting up, or outlived with a shield and damage reduction. I've only played this a little bit here, so I can only comment on the fact that I've died to it a couple of times and I've killed people with it a couple of times, but it is a very cool feat. All of her feats are very unique and very fun. I do think they're engaging as well, so I'm very happy to see that. I'm not sure how to approach making content about her, but I am going to attempt to make another video specifically detailing her now that I have access to her. Same story as the reworks. I wasn't happy with what was shown on stream, so I didn't make a full video about it. Now that we have access to it, I can get in and play her a little bit, as you've been seeing on this video. Then as a final season note here, we did get new weapons. These are rare tier weapons for all heroes. So this is a blue quality weapon. They are very basic and not at all frilly. So if you're going in expecting a new high rep fantasy weapon, you're looking at this wrong. But we have some low rep realistic weapons that have come with the uh, season here. And as a nice way to farm them, there are arcade mode changes that came with this. They've improved the accessibility so that people can get into arcade easier. For weekly quests, they've reduced it down from slightly upgraded teal tier all the way down to the yellow tier. So the level has gone from 162 down to 108. This means that you can go into the weekly quests long before you get to rep 9 with max gear. They've also added the objectives to the loading screens so that you know exactly what you're getting into. And they've rebalanced all of the arcade mode based on your gear score. So if you are under the recommended gear score, the penalties applied have been toned down massively so that you will no longer have such a large hit by not having equipment equipped. If you have rarity above the recommended gear score, you will have no penalties, so you will actually have your full normal damage, which wasn't happening before. And if you're massively above it, you will actually get a slight buff to your damage output. So if you're going in with a fully upgraded character now, you will have a much, much easier time than you were having, say, two weeks ago. They will also be bringing back some of the older weekly quests by adding in a rotation. So if you've missed specific stories, and you actually care about those, they will be returning at some point in time. They will cycle through. That also means for the old rewards, you'll be able to get a guaranteed weekly crimson or pink arcade reward. So you no longer need to worry about the weekly rewards being locked out and pure RNG. And speaking of the weekly rewards, with the season we have a new weekly arcade reward. So you can go ahead and pick that up for your first completion this week. And I know I said final before, but this is actually a massive change that uh, a lot of people might not have heard about. The UI in For Honor has been completely revamped for all multiplayer game modes. You've been seeing it on the footage during this video, and honestly it looks super clean. It's similar to Breach, but even the Breach UI, this is further cleaned up from that. It's really nice that nothing's in your way anymore, you can always see indicators directly in front of you. It's just nice. So now that we've been here for about nine and a half minutes, that is all of the year three season two news coming with the Sakura patch. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you on the battlefield.